The application pathway for medicine is a lengthy and often tedious process, but it doesn't have to be a difficult one. And today we are going to go through all of the steps you need to know in order to apply for medicine in Australia. If you're new to my channel, my name's Laura and I'm a fourth year medical student in Sydney. Just a quick overview to begin with, this is the rough timeline that we're working with. The first big ticket item is the UCAT. Applications to sit the UCAT open on the 1st of March and they close on the 17th of May. The UCAT itself is then sat between the 1st of July and the 12th of August. Following on from the UCAT, we then have UAC applications and applications direct to the university. Interviews are then offered on a competitive basis in early November, and these are determined by your UCAT scores. The interview period generally then runs from the end of November through to mid-December, although some unis are still interviewing in January, before you finally lock in your preferences in January and offer rounds are made. If you're lucky enough to get an offer to study medicine, you'll then start somewhere in mid-February. So there are a lot of steps and it can seem a little bit confusing. I'll also preface this by saying I can only speak from my personal experience as a domestic applicant. There are different application pathways for international students and there's also a different application pathway for Indigenous students too. Okay, let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about, because the first thing that you are going to encounter, is the UCAT. Now, I've made a whole entire video going into detail on what the UCAT is and how you prepare for it, which I will link here. My number one takeaway for the UCAT though, if you're watching this video right now and you haven't started to prepare for the UCAT, stop. Stop everything that you're doing and go and sign up for a preparation course. I cannot overstate the importance of preparing for the UCAT. Most universities use the UCAT exclusively to offer interviews and it's also weighted quite highly in the actual selection process. You need a good UCAT score if you want to get into medicine. And the good thing is, is it's quite achievable if you prepare for it. The preparation course that I personally used was the Med Entry Platinum Package. It is expensive, but it's an investment in your future. Really, what's $900 in the long run if it gets you into medicine this year and you end up with an entire extra year of a doctor's salary? That being said, if you can't afford the package, there is a slightly cheaper one. I think it's two or $300. It's an online exclusive package. It's also fantastic. If that's even still out of your price range, go on the internet. There are so many free resources. Just do as much practice as you can. Please practice, practice, practice for the UCAT. Prepare as much and as often as you can. Go into it knowing what to expect. And that's the best way to ensure that you're gonna maximize your chance of getting a great UCAT score. Okay, we've prepared. Now we actually have to book in for our test. And we have to book in for our test before the 17th of May. Depending on when you've started to prepare for the UCAT, you're probably gonna to wanna to sit it at a slightly different time throughout the testing period. If you're someone that's been preparing for 12 months or more and you feel really confident, then select a test day at the beginning of the session. If you're only just starting to prepare now, I would be selecting a test day as close to the end of the session as you can, as long as that's not gonna interfere with your HSC trials, any assessments, or if you're at uni, any exams, assignments. You really wanna give yourself the best chance to succeed, whilst keeping in mind it is only one of a combination of aspects that universities look at to offer medical places. Okay, so the UCAT is done and dusted. During this time as well, I'd also really recommend that you are researching the different medical programs, the different universities, deciding on where you want to apply. And there's a few different things I think you should consider when making this decision. To start with, are you looking for an undergraduate program or a graduate program? Now, an undergraduate program, you can enter straight from high school or if you haven't yet completed your university degree. For instance, I have a lot of friends who did a year or two of nursing before applying for undergraduate medicine. Now, if they'd completed their degrees, they'd then be looking at graduate universities. Typically, the graduate programs are shorter they're four years instead of five or six and that's because the university deems that you already have some prior knowledge some previous experience and that you're not starting from scratch. Along these same lines is the length of the program. As I said, graduate programs are mostly four years. Undergraduate programs are typically five or six years. Now there's really not too much in it except for the fact that the five year programs are gonna be a little bit more full on, generally because you're working on your research project or your thesis at the same time as you're doing clinical learning as well. Another consideration is the type of program. This was more prevalent in previous years, 
Australia typically offered two options, the Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery and the Doctor of Medicine programs. Whilst they would graduate you with practically exactly the same qualification, there is a cultural shift away from the MBBS towards the Doctor of Medicine. And I think we're at the point now where we might almost exclusively be offering the Doctor of Medicine programs. Still, it's one to think about. Next up, you'll want to consider the location. Do you want to be studying in the city that you're currently living in? Would you like to move away? Do you want to be in a rural area? Or would you like a combination of these things? Medical schools in Australia are typically based in major cities, but most of them have clinical schools outside of these areas. The next thing is the admission criteria. What are they actually looking for in an applicant? Are there any prerequisites? Do they publish their UCAT cutoffs? What are the ATAR or GPA requirements? Do they offer interviews? How do they weight each of these aspects when it actually comes to selecting applicants? For example, I know some unis equally weight the UCAT, the academic results and the interview performance. Whilst others use the UCAT score and academic results as a threshold, which if surpassed, applicants are judged 100% based on the interview performance. And finally, we do have to consider the financial side of things as well. Medical degrees in Australia range from $44,000 for a Commonwealth supported place, all the way up to $434,000 for a domestic student. Now, I'm not sure about you, but that would make a big difference on where I chose to study. Similarly, which universities offer scholarships that you're eligible for? What's the cost of living like in the associated area? These are all things that you have to consider when picking a medical school. Okay, moving on to the UAC application process. Now, I would have loved to have been able to walk you through step by step, but for some reason, the UAC portal isn't open at the moment. So you would just have to bear with me. I'm gonna be a little bit creative and you're gonna to need to use a little bit of imagination. The crux of the application process is through UAC, which is the organization that we're applying for medical school through, whether undergraduate or graduate, you can select five university preferences. What that means is that you can only apply for up to five universities in a year, which is also why the research is super important. Now this might be what your UAC preference list ends up looking like. At number one, I've got the Joint Doctor of Medicine program between Western Sydney and Charles Sturt Universities. Number two, I've got the Joint Doctor of Medicine program between the University of Newcastle and the University of New England. At number three, I've got the medical program at the University of New South Wales. At number four, I've got the undergraduate pathway into medicine at the University of Sydney. And at number five, I've got the Bachelor of Clinical Science at Macquarie University, which is an indirect pathway into medicine. The UAC application process has to be completed between the 1st of August and the 30th of September. It's really important that you put your top five university choices onto this list when you're applying because you'll only be considered for interviews by universities on this list. In addition to applying through UAC, you'll have to then go on and do a direct application to the university. Don't worry, this isn't written personal statements or anything like that. It's just a long-winded form with all of your personal information, address, date of birth, contact phone numbers, primary schools, high schools, everything like that. At this stage of the process, the order that you have the universities in your preference list doesn't matter. As long as you have a program on your preference list in UAC, you will be considered for an interview spot. And there's no restriction to the number of interviews that you can be offered. This transitions us really nicely into receiving interview offers. Now, I've also done a whole video on interviews, so I won't go into it in too much depth because I'll leave a link below and also up here. But you should know that most interview offers come out early to mid-November. From memory, I think I received mine on the 7th and 12th of November. You'll need to accept your interview offers. I'd also really recommend that you prepare for your interviews, not in the same way that you prepare for the UCAT. Interview preparation is a lot more relaxed. It also involves a lot more self-reflection, thinking back on times when you've resolved conflict, worked in a team, working on communicating with empathy. But again, check out my video for that because that's not what this is about. So then it's interview time, you go and you do your interviews and then more waiting. At this point in time, we're going to want to go back and have a look at our UAC preference list. Now, if we haven't received interview offers 
for medical programs that we've applied for. There's really no point in keeping them on your UAC preference list. Then comes the day and ATARs are released. Hopefully this is a day filled with relief and happiness because you've got the marks that you need. What I would also recommend after you've received your ATAR, go back again to your UAC preference list and potentially changing your fifth preference for a backup option for a course with a lower ATAR entry requirement that you still think you'd enjoy in the instance that you're not accepted into medicine. You'll have a university course that you can do for a year to build up a really good GPA and apply again next Year. Now the Bachelor of Clinical Science at Macquarie University is a backup option in and of itself but back when I was applying for medicine I actually put down paramedicine as my backup option. I would recommend keeping it health related. You don't have to but it does make it a lot easier if you have to transition across having a little bit of relevant experience already but yeah definitely not essential. My brother did three years of construction management before he got into medicine so it really doesn't matter what you pick just pick something that you enjoy and that you think will be relatively easy to get a really good grade at. Now this point in time is also when the position of your preferences really start to matter. That is because you can only receive one acceptance per round of offers through UAC. This is also where the research aspect really comes into play, especially if you're entering medicine through a non-conventional pathway. Now, I probably should have mentioned before that there are different pathways into medicine. For example, you have domestic Commonwealth supported places, which means the government subsidizes a large sum of your university fees. You've also got domestic full fee paying students. You have rural entry pathways, indigenous entry pathways, equity entry pathways, international pathways, heaps and heaps of different pathways. So basically go on research, find out which ones you're eligible for and apply through them. The reason I bring this up now when we're talking about the UAC list in order of preferences is because some pathways may offer early entry. For instance, when I was applying for medicine, if I put Western Sydney University as my number one preference as a rural pathway applicant, I was considered for offers in December. Now I did this and I did get an offer and I accepted it. What I did after I'd accepted this was remove Western Sydney from my preference list and bump everything else up. What that meant is when the January offers came around, I was then reconsidered for my new number one preference. And using this method, I actually managed to secure another offer through the University of Newcastle and New England's joint program. Now, if I was being really savvy, what I could have done is after accepting the Newcastle offer, remove that from my preference list and again, bump everything else up because there are still second and third round offers through February for the last few remaining places. I really hope all of that made sense. It can be quite confusing, but if you know how to take advantage of the system, you can make it work for you. One little final note that I would like to add relates to a question that I get all of the time, and that is, does the university I pick have an impact on the jobs that I'll be eligible for after graduation? And the short answer is, no. Just to give you a really quick little rundown, internships, which is the first year for doctors after graduation in New South Wales, are basically based on a lottery type system in that Every new graduate preferences the 16 different hospital networks on a list of one all the way through to 16. And all of these preference lists for every person are then put into an algorithm which matches the most number of people with their number one choice as possible. And it's pretty good at this. I think on average about 92% of people end up with their first choice hospital. And of the 8% of people who don't, this has nothing to do with their university, their GPA, which type of degree they have, which pathway they entered through, none of it. It really is just pure luck. So don't get too caught up in thinking that you have to go to a university with a stellar reputation because I'll tell you right now from my experience and meeting heaps of different medical students from different unis all across the country, they all have their perks. Every uni has something that none of the others do and there really are positives to all of the different program types. I really hope you found this video useful. If you wanna hear more about my personal journey into medicine, I will leave that video here. Otherwise, please subscribe to my channel, give this one a big thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.